Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, I just reacted to Theravada Buddhism and therefore it is only right to check out Dr. Zucker Naik yet again, this time with his video Prophecies of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Buddhist scriptures. As I said previously, I'm very critical when it comes down to interpretations of Prophet Muhammad within older scriptures, for example, within the Bible. This always reminds me of Christians seeking to find Jesus within the Old Testament, etc., etc. I even read books, for example, Christ the Eternal Tao, in which Orthodox scholars try to find Jesus within Taoism. So this is why I am so critical about such statements. I've seen it before. Before. Nevertheless, I'm here to learn and I'm looking forward to see what Dr. Zakir Naik has to say about Buddhism and the Prophet Muhammad. Let's have a look. Let's discuss the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Buddhist scriptures. Almost all the Buddhist scriptures, they speak about a Maitri to come. It's also mentioned in Chikka Varsunar Setanta, D11176. It says that Another Buddha will come by the name of Maitri. That I heard before. The Supreme One, the Enlightened One, endowed with wisdom and conduct, auspicious, having knowledge of the universe. Whatever he will get from supernatural knowledge, he will preach to the whole world. He will preach a religion which will be glorious at the beginning, glorious at the climax, and glorious at the end. He will preach a way of life which will be truthful and wholly perfect. He will have several thousands of monks as I have several hundreds of monks. This prophecy is also repeated in the sacred books of the East, volume 35, page number 225, that the Maitri will come. <laughs> How does he remember all of this? In such criteria and qualities. And further it says that he will be a leader of thousands of people as I am a leader of hundreds of people. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of Buddha, page number 217 and 18, that Ananda, he asks Buddha that, O oh, Blessed One, after you have gone, who will guide us? So the Blessed One Buddha, he replied, that I am not the first Buddha in this world, neither am I the last. There will be another Buddha who will come the Holy One, the Supreme One, the Enlightened One, endowed with wisdom and conduct, the auspicious, having knowledge of the universe. He will preach a good religion. He will preach a religion which will be glorious at the beginning, glorious at the climax, and glorious at the end. He will teach a religion which will be based on truth and will be a perfect way of life. And he will have many thousands of disciples as I have only hundreds of disciples. What would be very interesting for me to find out is if we're talking about the second Buddha, because there are two Buddhas, right? One is the skinny one and one is the fat one. One comes from India and the other one from China, if I'm not mistaken. And this is why it would be important to know if we're talking about the first or the second Buddha, because if the first Buddha made those predictions, then we already had the second Buddha and this would apply to him. However, if it was the second Buddha that made those predictions, then of course we could be talking about Prophet Muhammad. The Ananda asks, Buddha, the Blessed One, how will we know him? So Buddha replies, he will be called as Maitri. Maitri means the merciful, loving, kind, compassionate. One equivalent Arabic word is Rahma. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent thee not but as a mercy to all the world, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humanity. <laughs> this word Rahma, 
mercy and its derivatives. Just by listening to this, I have to say it is pretty compelling, but at the same time, we would need to hear Buddhists on this topic. So if we have any Buddhists watching, please guys, let me know what you think about this. I mentioned in the Quran, no less than 409 times. And every chapter of the Quran, except for Surah Tawbah, chapter number nine, begins with the beautiful formula, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Sure, that is correct, but the most gracious, the most merciful is of course applied to Allah, to God, and not to Muhammad. So I believe this is a switch up. So the Buddhist scriptures, almost all of them, prophesize about the Maitri that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to come. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is further prophesied in the Buddhist scriptures, which is mentioned in the sacred books of the East, volume number 11, page number 36. Mahaparinibbana Sutta, chapter number 2, verse number 32, it says that as for the Buddha, there are no exoteric or esoteric teachers. And O Ananda, the Tathagatas, that means the teachers, have nothing like a closed fist. We cannot keep the knowledge to ourselves. It should be proclaimed. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whatever he received as a wahi from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he proclaimed to the whole of humanity. And he told his disciples that never keep it away from humankind. Proclaim right. it and spread it. That's what's mentioned in the prophecy. There's nothing like esoteric or exoteric. Everything should be told to humankind. That is absolutely it's correct. Zakir Naik nailed it here. This was absolutely fascinating to observe for me personally when I started studying Islam. What I found is that there's truly no esoteric, occult, hidden teaching within Islam. Everything is open to the Muslims. You don't have to reach a certain level like in Freemasonry. You don't have to be from a certain caste like within Hinduism. All the knowledge is presented to you. Mention in the Buddhist scriptures, in the sacred books of the East, Volume number 11, page number 97, Mahaparinibbana Sutta, chapter number 5, verse number 36. It says that as Buddha had a servitor by the name of Ananda, so shall the Maitri have a servitor. And we know from history, from the series of Muhammad Sallallahu that the servitor of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was Anas. May Allah be pleased with him. Oh, Allah. really? who was the son of Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. And Hadat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he says, that That's my new to parents me. gave me to the Prophet at the age of eight. And his mother told the Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, take this to be your servant. And Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, that the Prophet referred to him as his son or the little beloved one. Interesting, I didn't know this fact. I would have expected Zakir Naik to talk about Abu Bakr and the other companions now. And we know how that Anas may Allah be pleased with him. He always stood by the Prophet in times of peace and in times of war, in times of safety, in times of danger. He can very well be compared to Ananda. We know when the mad elephant rushes at Buddha, Ananda stood by Buddha. Similarly, we know how that Anas may Allah be pleased with him. In the battle of Uhud, at the age of 11, even when the enemies were close to Prophet Muhammad Hadat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, stood by the Prophet. Even in the battle of Hunayn, at the age of 16, when the enemies who were archers surrounded the Prophet, yet Hadat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he stood by the Prophet. He can very well be compared like Ananda when the mad elephant rushes at Buddha and Ananda stays by Buddha. So this is the fulfillment of the prophecy that the Maitri will have a servitor. It is further mentioned in the Gospel of Buddha, page number 214, that this Maitri to come, this other Buddha to come, will have six qualities. The first is, he will get enlightenment at night. Number two, he will become bright when he gets enlightened. Number three, he will die a natural death. Number four, he will die at night. Number five, when he dies, he'll become bright. And number six, once he dies, he will never be seen in the bodily form in this earth again. These six qualities and criteria befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Guys, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm probably brainwashed by David Wood. However, I never heard that Prophet Muhammad died a natural death. As far as I know, he got poisoned. Muhammad the first wahi he got was at night time. 
As I mentioned earlier, the Quran says in Surah Dukhan, chapter 44, verse number 2 and 3, and Surah Qadr, chapter 97, verse number 1, that the Quran was revealed in the night of power. It further yeah. says, he will be lit up. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had become bright. He was enlightened. It further says, he will die a natural death. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a natural death. Point number four, he will die at night. And is that really correct? Is my information completely wrong? Please let me know in the comment section, guys. As far as I know, he got poisoned by a Jewish woman. Is this accurate or not? You know from the Hadith of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, that she did not have oil in the lamp. So she borrowed the oil from the neighbor, indicating it was night when Prophet Muhammad died. It further says that he will become bright at the time of death. And Hazrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, says that Prophet Muhammad looked bright when he died. And the last point is that when he dies, he will never be seen in the bodily form on this earth. I know Muhammad when he died in the bodily form, he's buried in Medina and he was never seen in bodily form again. Moreover, this could be anecdotal as well. So in the bodily form, in terms of reincarnation or in terms of coming back, like Jesus is prophesied to do, surely. But moreover, Prophet Muhammad, in comparison to the Buddha, is not seen in bodily form. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you look at all the Buddha statues throughout Asia, you still see Buddha in a bodily form. But if you look at Prophet Muhammad, you cannot look at him, you cannot see anything because there is no depiction of his bodily form. All these criteria, that's my interpretation, the scriptures befit no one but the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad <laughs> It's further mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures, in the sacred books of the East, volume number 10, page number 68. It says that the Tathagatas, they are only preachers. That means the Buddha has to come. They can only preach. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Ghashia, chapter number 88, verse number 21, in the Allah says to the Prophet, your job is to deliver the message. Giving hidayah is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's further mentioned in sacred books of the East, volume number 10. That's what I absolutely loved about the Quran, that it showed the position of Muhammad clearly. He was just the messenger. His only position here on this earth was to bring about the Quran. This by itself is powerful enough. In page number 67, that to go to paradise, even your good deeds are responsible. Your good deeds are responsible for you to go to paradise. And Allah says in Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, Wal as, inna al-insana fi khusr. Which means, by the token of time, man is very in a state of loss. Except those who have faith, those who have righteous deed, those who exhort people to truth, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. One of the criteria to go to Jannah is Amal Salihat, righteous deed, which is mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures. Absolutely, man. And this is something that I talked about within my Telegram group. You can check the link in the description box and join for absolutely free. We discussed this, being saved by faith alone. This ultimately is something that I really disliked within Christianity. Not every Christian thinks like this, but many sects believe that you are saved by faith alone, by faith in Jesus. All you have to do is believe in Jesus and you're going to be saved. Of course, that brings about many, many issues, such as what if you are a killer, a rapist and whatnot, but you believe in Christ. Another person doesn't believe in Christ, but doesn't sin at all. Who goes to heaven? So therefore, of course, deeds are a huge part of the faith. Otherwise, this whole creation would be for nothing. Why would God create us in physical bodies, in physical bodies in which we can do good or evil deeds? And now we're going to choose to do only evil deeds, but we're going to believe. And like that, we get a free ticket to heaven. That's, of course, ridiculous. So it's mentioned in Dhammapad, Mattaya Sutta, 151. It gives the criteria of the Buddha, the final Maitri, to come. It says that he will be a mercy to humankind. He will be gentle. He will be an example to humankind. He says he will be kind. And he will be truthful. So all these criteria befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad This was in brief regarding Muhammad in the Buddhist scriptures.
Alright, and this is it for today's video. As always, Dr. Zucker Nike delivers. As I said in the beginning, I'm critical of such claims. However, his presentation was definitely convincing. Nevertheless, I would have to look into those sources. And moreover, I would be interested to see what Buddhists have to say about those claims. Please let me know in the comment section if we have Buddhists on board. Thank you so much for that. But aside from the convincing speech, I have to say that I was shocked by the claim that Prophet Muhammad died a natural death. At the moment, I'm reading the biography of Prophet Muhammad. However, I didn't make it to the end. Therefore, I do not know his true cause of death. The only thing that I heard, as I said prior, was by David Wood. David Wood claimed that Prophet Muhammad was poisoned by a Jewish woman. A Jewish woman that Prophet Muhammad forcefully took out of her village. He killed her husband and took her as a wife. And it was that woman that poisoned Prophet Muhammad. That's what I've been told. So please clarify this for me and let me know in the comment section what the true cause of death was. Thank you so much for that as well, guys. All right, but this is it. Let's wrap it up. If you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, even with as little as one dollar, you would help me out a lot. All right, guys, but this is it. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.